Hello everyone, so today's video is going to be a little bit different. I was going to continue the series on the headphone amplifier in the power supply section of things, but I woke up today and I realized I really needed <laughs> to get this done, okay? So what we'll be building today is a fume extractor, mainly for soldering. So like my lab right now, it's located in the attic of my apartment. And because of that, uh, it doesn't have any sort of um, air circulation, so I can't open a window to uh, refresh in the air here. I have an air purifier, but that doesn't um, fix the issue that when I'm soldering, all those toxic fumes are just blowing straight into my face. And because of the design of the bench and everything, it, it it's really bad because <laughs> since I have a... a all my equipment is, is up here, it's not at the bench, at the bench level. It creates sort of, sort of like a, a trap for all the, the solder fumes while I'm soldering. And it, it's really, it's really bad. So I really needed to get this done. And I woke up today a little bit um, um, excited about this and with all the, uh, the entire idea in my head. So I just said, okay, let, let's just build this. So then I started thinking, hey, I could, uh, since I'm doing the, the whole video thing, I'm just going to uh, record it as well and bring you guys along for the ride, okay? So first of all, let's just talk about uh, what is actually a fume extractor. So the idea is very simple. Like the, when you're soldering, the, there are a bunch of uh, toxic fumes that get out of the flux of the solder. It's not about the solder, that's why like lead-based stuff is not really an issue. <laughs> that's why I use lead-based. In the lead-free base, based stuff it's it's horrible because the flux is even more toxic so hey just use leaded solder um so while you're soldering the flux is burning off and it gives off a lot of toxic fumes and you need to first of all you need to take that away from from your uh, your nose <laughs> as quickly as possible and uh as an added uh safety measure you should also filter that air before you uh, disperse it into your ambient okay so Let's just draw a quick uh, diagram of how this works. So let's say this is like a, a bit of a <laughs> um, solder fumes, some solder smoke. This needs to be uh, sucked into some sort of a tubing, okay, like this, just so that it's um, very quickly um, uh, taken away from, from where you're actually at which then passes through, let's say, a, a ventilator. This is horrible. That, that's why I'm in um, engineering and not in arts. <laughs> so it passes through a ventilator, which is actually providing all of the, the airflow in this case. And then it goes into an air filter. Uh, I don't know how to draw like an air filter, so let's just draw some some sort of a box with particles in it okay and then it just goes out into your, your ambient so another box to represent your ambient terrible box but hey yeah so that that's uh, that's basically what a fume fume extractor does you solder it gets piped by a ventilator into a filter and then released um, in your ambient, okay? It's very simple stuff. Now, you can buy this already. You can buy this pre-made, but there is a little problem. They are extremely expensive. So let's, let's just take a look at that and see what our options are. So the first thing that you can do, if you want to go a bit more professional and actually have something that's good, you go into your um, electronics supplier and you start looking at fume extractors and usually the first thing that pops up is something like this. This is a unit by Weller. It's ver a very good unit. It's <laughs> like it's all sorts of professional. This is the, uh, uh, the real deal here. You've got the tube, the nozzle, everything that you need in here. But there is one problem. <laughs> one unit will set you back around uh, 110 euros, which is way too much just for uh, for um, sucking some fumes. Again, yeah, yeah, okay, like it's for your safety and it will uh, it will prolong your life. But hey, it's it's like 600 euros. And this is the the data sheet for it. 
And what you can see here in the second page is the, the most important thing, which is the capacity, which is given in a cubic meters per hour, which is 150, okay? So this can displace 150 cubic meters of air, cubic, yeah, cubic meters of air per hour, which is great. This, this, air, this amount of airflow, it's, it's going to, to quickly pull up any uh, fumes and it, it's going to do its job quite well. But for 600 euros. So you don't want to pay this. This is way too much. You would only pay for something like this if you were in a professional environment. So yeah, At, in a hobby shop or a, a small business like this, it's, it's no way you can pay for that. Then you start looking and then you come across like these jokes. Okay, this is, this is, I don't know why this, this exists, seriously. So it's a lot cheaper, 46 euros, great. But if you go to the data sheet and you look at the absorption capacity, it's only one, um, one uh, cubic meter per minute. This is a bit different. That's the Weller unit. It was uh, specified in hours. But we can say that this, if we convert, this can uh, displace um, 60 um, cubic meters per hour. So it's less than half of the, the Weller unit. And this is just a joke. First of all, the, the filter uh, does uh, almost nothing. It's such a, a tiny filter and uh, it will just clog up super fast, but it, it actually does take away some of the smoke from your face. It's not a lot, but it takes some. <laughs> this is always like better than nothing, but if you're going to do this, I would just say, hey, just grab a, a PC fan just put it on the, the side of your bench and just let that blow the solder the solder fumes away this is this is just way too much money for something that's basically just as good as a um, a simple pc fan so yeah, this is this is not okay this is just crap okay. and this is way too much money this is just too expensive no way no way this this could, should be costing this and the biggest problem here is that there is just no in between i don't understand another thing i just don't understand why there's no in between these two things so what you have to do to fill that gap is build one yourself so let's look there you have a and we've already talked about the the pc fan but hey, that that's a bit too <laughs> too little for me uh in this case, let's just look at uh, two alternatives to uh, these units to actually have something that works, that it's better than these units, and that uh, will uh, prolong your life and, and all that, okay? So let's look at that. So in, our, in order for us to uh, do this ourselves, first of all, we need to understand the, the building blocks of what we need, and then we can just go out and shop for these things. First thing that you need is some kind of tubing. That's pretty simple. You need some kind of fan, also simple, and a filter. Okay. Usually this is a uh, carbon activated filter. So it's not just uh, any sort of filter, but uh, you, can, you can get by with a lot of stuff. We will look into that. The first thing that you can do is you can just, if you just put, what I'm going to show you right now, if you just put it on Google and search for it, Usually the first result that will come up in everyone's search feed is going to be this, okay? It's going to be one of those websites <laughs> that sell uh, um, very specific uh, products for, for growing a very specific kind of plant indoors, okay? <laughs> so if you search for any sort of like turbine fan and carbon activated filter, you come up with this. So websites that uh, sell you stuff to grow plants indoors. Okay, <laughs> and uh, what you search for is a uh, turbine fan like this. It's a, those little units, they're usually like this size, okay? And just this fan, it's almost the price of that, uh, that uh, crappy little unit. Okay, but this is actually going to give you around 145 to 187 cubic meters uh, per hour of airflow of capacity that's a lot that's literally comparable to the 
Weller unit that we've seen here, because the Weller unit, it was 150. Okay, so it, this is pretty good. It's basically the same and sometimes even better. And the second thing that you need is just a uh, uh, carbon activated filter. In this case, these two would be a perfect match because of the capacity of air that you can flow through them. And uh, all you need will be some tubing to connect uh, this, uh, this mouthpiece to this one and uh, some tubing to go to uh, closer to your work. And it, this is literally a plug and play solution. Okay, so for uh, around 70 euros, you, you've got literally the whole system that you would be paying uh, 680 euros for. And this is good enough. If you have a lot of space, this would be perfect. In Brazil, this is what I had. Uh, I'm from Brazil, I moved here to Portugal recently, and um, there I had a, a big lab with a lot of space, so I could just afford to put this anywhere, I just had space for it. Now that I'm, I've downsized a lot, I just can't afford to, to waste this much space, and you can't make this very portable. You can make a, a little box to put all of this stuff in, but these filters, they are very big, they are a lot bigger than the, the turbine fans. And it's just not an, not a, a feasible solution for me here to have a to lug a, a, a big thing around and when I'm soldering put it on the bench and stuff like that. This is just unfeasible for me. But this is plug and play. It's it's uh, it's not cheap, but it's not expensive. It's a good price, and you just buy these things and just a little bit of tubing. You just plug them together, and you're good to go. Okay. Now, this is all good, but it's still a bit uh, price, and I couldn't um, do this here with the size of lab that I have right now. So, let's take a look at what I am going to be using, right? So, if you look at the Weller unit, you see that it's just a bit of tubing to direct the air, and a box that contains the fan and the filter. So, what I'm going to do is just replicate this, okay? With the the growing the plant growing stuff you're basically you don't have the box you have to build the box yourself you just have uh, individual components it's, it's kind of like using um, uh, in electronics those modules that you just plug in or something like an Arduino module okay now to replicate this I've decided to do two things first of all I need to get some tubing which is the same for the previous stuff as well but I decided to get this. This is just one of those uh, little fans that you put on a bathroom to extract all the, the air and the fumes from the bathroom. And uh, usually you can just dump them outside or in case here it's an apartment building. So there is a uh, ventilation tube where you dump that. Uh. So these are pretty cheap since they are a commodity. You just have them everywhere. This is a turbine model. It's... Uh, intended to combine when you have a uh, two, two, two pieces of tubing and you don't want the those uh, ceiling units that have everything uh, built in so that you can just put a, uh, a, a, a plate at, in your ceiling and then you install the tubing and then put this to uh, direct the air to the outside world okay so this is cheap this is uh, 20, 29 yeah 29 euros and the, it, this is very small well, let me grab it. So here it is. Right now, I've already just taken it apart a bit. So this is the unit. It's very small, very compact. The those turbine units that we've seen before, they are like this big. So they are they are not um, compact like this. And this thing can displace 190 um, cubic meters of air per hour which is way better than the Weller unit and better even than the, the little turbine that we've seen. So this is great, okay? So right off the bat, we have something that's compact that can move a lot of air. And in that front, we are regolding. This is, this is just amazing. And it's very cheap, <laughs> which is very important. So for the box part of the thing, I decide to go cheap again. I just got one of these, uh, Ikea boxes. I use them to store my, my components. So <laughs> it's a PVC box. It's stylish and all. And the good thing is that uh, 
It already has kind of a, a nice seal. Here it is. Okay. It, uh, it has a kind of a good seal already. When you, uh, when you try to open them or close them, you can feel that the air is having trouble to get out or into the, the box. So it's already pretty well airtight as it is. So that's great. And um, the best thing is that it's super cheap. <laughs> it's three euros. This is the smallest one. It's uh, 18 by 26 centimeters. This is the IKEA code if you want to, to do this at home yourself. So this is going to be the box, okay? That's going to mount all of the, the stuff in to look like the Weller unit. So we're basically going to do like the ghetto version of the Weller unit. And for the filter, Oh, I almost forgot. I since this is a um, an attic, it's not very good at uh, at. Uh, there's not a lot of airflow, but I really didn't. I, I wasn't uh, very worried about the fumes just staying in the air because I have a very good air purifier to take care of that in the long term. I was only worried about the short term when I'm actually soldering and those fumes were ge getting into my face. So I'm not worried about uh, uh, putting some of the solder fumes in the air because the air filter at night I can just leave it on in turbo and it will get rid of everything. So what I decide to use is just one of these ultra cheap uh, litter box, cat litter box uh, filters. It's active carbon, it, w it costs uh, 6 euros, double what I made in the box, this is kind of insane. Hey, it's cheap. It's very cheap, to be honest. And hey, you can just cut it up and uh, put it in the box and it will work just fine. This will get clogged up pretty fast, okay? So that's an issue you have to, uh, if you really want to use this, you'll have to replace these quite often. But what you can do, uh, I didn't do this because I just wanted something compact and uh, <laughs> the hardware store was all out of uh, those kitchen filters that you put on the on the uh, stove exhaust system. You can grab those because those have a large area. They have a ton of carbon in them. That's just a much better filter. So if you want to actually to uh, use that as a uh, as filtering, if you don't have an air purifier, then that would be the best choice. You get a bigger IKEA box like this, and then you just put the the bigger the best the biggest filter that you can afford into that and it's also just going to be cheap because those are like what 12 euros so yeah but we are all out of those here so i just decide hey go cheap and uh just go with something that's compact so the idea will be very simple okay first of all inside the box i'll just drill some holes in the sides where this thing's going to be mounted Okay, so I have here some pieces because uh, mine, my litter box, it didn't fit this this large stuff, so I just cut it up and installed it anyway. So you can just cut this stuff up with a uh, a pair of uh, scissors, or in this case, I just use an X-Acto knife so that uh, it doesn't damage the the blade. I can just throw it out. So we can just do some uh, holes here, drill some holes, and then you can just install this like this okay and um put some uh some um aluminium tape uh, let me just grab that just place with it with some uh, aluminium tape like this and it will be good enough this doesn't have to be super airtight i'm not worried about that because <laughs> again i have an air purifier to take care of the the very toxic stuff that will be in the air later so yeah, so this is the first part. Now, the next part will be here in the lid. So here on the lid, we will have two things. First of all, we need a hole to put the, the, the turbine fan like this, okay? And we'll also need a switch because there's just no switch here. When you hardwire this, if you put, if you put power here, it's just going to run. All the, all the time. We don't want that. A switch is always good. So you have to put a switch. In this case, I just went with a, uh, a regular uh, circuit breaker. 
because of one thing, okay? I could use just a, a, a main switch, one of those uh, rocker switches that you can buy, like they're this size and handle like six amps or something. The biggest problem is that I would have to cut this uh, a square here, place it here, all the wiring would be inside the box, and there it would just be a... Uh, it just would be a bit messy because the solder fumes would start to to uh, accumulate a lot of soot inside of it and I just didn't want to subject the wires to that sort of stuff long term and also because this thing the whole thing with the box and the circuit breaker cost me around three three and a half euros okay just a switch <laughs> would cost me Two and a half euros, and I, I was just, no, no way. This is just overkill for what it's doing. <laughs> Seriously, I, I wouldn't pay two and a half euros if I can get this whole thing for three and a half, okay? So this is what we are going to be doing, all right? So first, let me just show you one thing. I've already started on this project, okay? Just to, to let you guys know. So this is what I have so far, okay? There is the holes for the the circuit breaker and its housing and a hole to place this the only problem is you can see the hole is not a circle and there are these four holes here so what is that simple first i have no clue why i, I decided to do this but since i just woke up and wanted to to get this project done already I, in my haste to uh, buy stuff fast just so that I could start on this, I, my, my, my idea was to just have something like this in here, okay, and just have the, the tubing be like uh, something that you could easily just plug it out and, and uh, stash it somewhere else. And uh, this unit would be like dangling inside the, the tubing and that would... Um, suck the air and it will also like um, give it some uh, some um, weight so it would dangle in the bench you know i have no clue how i why i thought that that's just stupid okay and uh, this is just way too heavy to be dangling and gravity will already pull the whole tubing down on the bench i just don't even ask me so for this i, I started doing it because there is like this blank plate that's uh that just doesn't get uh, any air, so that's why this is like this. And uh, that's why it's in this funny shape and looks like this. The only problem is that now, like this this outline right here, the the circle, is actually the diameter of this. This is a uh, 120 millimeter diameter fan. And the problem is that, as you can see, it's, it comes pretty close to the, the uh, holes that I've drilled for this. Okay, because this is also 120 millimeters. <laughs> but hey, if I, if, if I went with uh, the idea to put it like this from the beginning, I would have made this hole a little bit bigger. Uh, uh, not a little bit bigger, sorry. A little bit smaller. So just that uh, I didn't have any problems trying to position this. This I'm just going to glue with uh, my favorite glue, epoxy. I'm just going to epoxy this thing down here. And it, it's, it won't move. I, I won't be, this won't have any f like uh, real like forces being exerted into it. It's not, it's not going to move anywhere. It's all that it, uh, it'll have to hold is a little bit of uh, tubing. So that's not an issue. So we are just going to glue it in here very strongly. Okay, so that it doesn't move. And I'll just plug up these holes. It's fine. Okay. No, hey, it's it's a, <laughs> sorts of thing. I didn't want to waste this since I've already uh, cut it up. So yeah, this is going to be the idea. So we have this here and the circuit breaker here. Now, let me um, drill some more holes here. I may also show you some footage of uh, drilling this these holes just so that you know how you can do this sort of stuff, like the the bigger holes that you don't need to. Uh, to care about their uh, <laughs> the way they are jagged okay um if you wanted this to be nice and smooth and all you could just file these stuff away this is just pvc with a dremel you can just eat this stuff pretty fast so i'm just going to enlarge this hole and um then uh i'll be back and to actually glue this thing on okay so see you in a bit
before we glue this thing in, the first thing that you gotta do is check the airflow, the, the direction of the airflow. In this case, it's going to be sucking air this way. So this point, the one the, with, the, with the impeller, should be uh, facing towards the inside of the box because we want to pull air, suck it in, pass it through the box, and then go out to the ambient. So that's the first thing. Also, this is the channel where the wires are going to go. And since the circuit breaker is going to be on this side, we should position this so that it has the optimum path to pull the wires through. Okay. That's not our thing. So yeah, so now let's just line this up. Let me just see this here. So you just line it up. Nice. Looks, looks okay. Yeah. Now, first thing that we are going to do is apply some hot glue. Okay. So this is just going to be to uh, hold this thing in while we are applying the, the epoxy. This way it doesn't try to move on us or anything else. So let's just, just dab a little bit of hot glue. Okay. Again, this is literally just so that it keeps still in its place while we are actually doing the fun glue. Oh, and it's already moving. Oh, disaster. <laughs> this is just, this is already looking great, huh? Oh, what a disaster. Okay, it's back on its place. Oh. Okay. So, last bit, okay, so now hopefully this thing will sit still, let the hot glue dry up, and then we can proceed to um, using the epoxy, okay, so see you in a bit, as soon as this thing dries up. Now that the hot glue has dried, Let's just take a look. First of all, this thing going nowhere. Like, with, just with the hot glue, this thing is already like n very nicely glued to this. So when we put the epoxy here, this thing is just going to be rock solid. Let's just inspect the bottom side. And hey, it looks, it looks nice. It looks okay. It's not pretty. And these can, can definitely cut you up. But hey, it's all right. And the, the impeller blades, they just move freely. There is no problem whatsoever, nothing that's catching. If you look down, there is just no glue in here, so no problems whatsoever there. Now let's uh let's start by putting some epoxy in here now. So for this I'm just going to use some uh, cheap epoxy from little. Okay. No, nothing fancy there, no need for anything fancy. If you're going to be mixing epoxy, just grab one of those, uh, these, uh, um, cheesecake, not cheesecake, <laughs> cream cheese or, uh, butter, uh, cups. Some, uh, some of those, uh, uh, not lollipops, I forgot what the name of these things are in English, but anyway, you know what I mean. Some, uh, not ice cream. Oh, how can I, I, I just can't remember now. Yeah, you know what this, these are, they are cheap. <laughs> And just mix it together in here. So yeah, let me let me do just that. So this might take a while. So I, I'll probably just uh, time lapse this. Say so with epoxy, when you think you have finished um, mixing this stuff up, you gotta mix it some more because the more you mix it, the better it will be. Okay.
No, that's not this one. So he's on his Yeah, let's just leave this mess right here to dry. Yeah, it's it's not pretty, okay. By the way, like, I don't know what little puts in these uh, their epoxy, but it, it has. It's the first time that I've seen epoxy that has a, a pleasant smell. Usually, epoxy has that uh, that egg-like uh, sulfur-based smell that's just horrible and. I just hate using it just because I love using epoxy, but I hate the, the smell of it. Dude, this thing is, it's like, it, it smells like almonds. Like, it's weird. It's like some like, sugary almond stuff. It's, and based on its color, it's, this is really tempting. <laughs> but it's nice. It's, it's, a, it's a pleasant smell. It's weird. <laughs> it's very weird. This. It's the first time that I've used this little stuff. I usually use like a, a bit better stuff, but hey. I've started using those, I was just like, hey, this won't hurt. So yeah, it's, it's weird, but hey, it's good. This will take a, a while. I don't know, I think this is like 30 minute epoxy or something. So yeah, uh, won't like, uh, torture you guys having to wait for this to dry. So hey, see you in a bit. And now that the glue is uh, pretty much dry, it's still a bit sticky. Okay. It, this will take like, a couple of hours to really come 100% hardened, but as it is right now, this thing is solid. <laughs> we can start messing around with it. So, start things up, let's just do some wiring from uh, this and just let the cable wrap prepared. Just leave the cable prepared here. What I'm going to be using is just this stuff. It's a double insulated two core cable. Since this is a double insulated product, it doesn't have an earth wire, so this is what we're going to be using, okay, uh, 1.5 millimeters squared, so yeah, so I'll just prepare this, probably a time lapse, so yeah, see you in a bit. So, here we go. This is nice and tight. This is, this is a bit neat. Yeah, it's like, it's the best that I could do. <laughs> yeah, looks all right. <laughs> now, all we need to do ju is just to cover 
all of this. And then this part of the work will be done. So yeah, this, uh, this started to look uh, nicer. Yeah, there we go. This, lo this looks okay. <laughs> I like this. Uh, this, is, this is not the, the best color choice, but hey, I'm the only one that's going to be seeing this. It's, it's uh, fine. So yeah, now what we need to do is wire up the circuit breaker. Now to wire up the circuit breaker box, what we'll have to do is drill some holes here on the side. The way that this box is constructed, um, it's supposed to, the, the best way to do this would be to have a cable gland here. It already has the, the punch out, it's right in at the seam of the, the box. But uh, since I really don't have any cable glands here, and when I was at the hardware store, I forgot to grab them. What I'm just, what I'm going to do is very simple. I'll just uh, um, drill a hole here at the bottom side. That's uh, the size of this wire right here. And we are going to do some uh, <laughs> some engineering to uh, figure out a way to the best uh, keep this cable inside there. Um, so first thing, let let me just check what size of um, drill will I need. So this is around seven point seven point five. Okay, so a, a eight millimeter drill bit will work right here. So I'll drill a uh, one millimeter millimeter hole here and uh, pass this cable through. Okay. I'll already also make the hole for the, the cable that's going to the, the mains outlet while I'm at it, right? So, be right back. Now that all the holes have been drilled, let me cut this cable a bit to length. No. And let's fish this through here. Yeah, so this will look pretty nice. It's gonna look about like that. Right, so now let me just uh, prepare these cables and uh, probably, you know, you know what? I'll, uh, I'll screw this in. First things first, uh, I completely forgot to buy some M5 screws. I thought I had them here, but the type that I have, they, they don't have the, the threads all up the way to the, to the head. So, and they are uh, pretty long. I could cut them up, that, that's how I used them, but I didn't have any M5 screws that were uh, smaller, so this is an M6 screw. But hey, it, it's very big as well, but it will, it's what I have. I don't want to, to go out <laughs> and then go to the hardware store. It's a 15 minute drive, it's not worth it just uh, for a bunch of screws. And these, I have uh, plenty of them laying around. So, this is what I'm going to use. It's a lot longer than I wished. I, have a hey this is this is what i have in hand this is what i'm going to use okay so i'll probably do a time lapse of this uh, so see you in a bit
Okay, so uh, the whole the, I've uh, already screwed in the bolts. Now uh, I was going to plug these holes up. I just decided, hey, while I'm at it, and since I have uh, just a, a crap ton of these screws, I'll just screw them in just so that it can just look like the cord decorative or, or some some crap like that. <laughs> it's a cheap way to plug up the holes and. Uh, kind of hide the the mistakes that I've made. <laughs> so, yeah, so this is what I have so far. Now, um, now I'm just going to uh, to uh, prepare the cable here for the for the um, circuit breaker. Let me put the circuit breaker in. Right. There we go. No, let me see here. So make this ring. Uh, let's see. Here. So yeah, we're Now, since I don't have any cable glands, I'm just going to use some zip ties just to prevent the cables from uh, moving around. So I'll put one zip tie here and another zip tie here. And that will uh, make a, uh, a very poor <laughs> cable gland, but it's, it's fine. This is, again, this is like a temporary thing. But I say that and I know that the more temporary something is, the more permanent it will be. So, yeah, this will probably stay here until this whole thing just uh, <laughs> dies on me and I replace it with something else. Yeah, just treat it as uh, permanent. There it is. This cable is secured now. Now we can just Cut these off. This one will leave a bit uh, bigger so that it catches on the top side of the lid. So there we go. This is... It's something. <laughs> now, let me uh, prepare the other half of the wire, the one that's going to the mains plug. All the wiring is done. Put a uh, nice Wago connector here to uh, jump the, the neutral. We are only going to be switching in the live. In this case, the neutral can just be uh, left uh, connected every every time. Since this is a, a, a here in Europe, it's a monophase, so no problem there. So yeah, now let me just uh, close this all up. And uh, we're going to do a little test with this cable as it is and uh, yeah then later we're gonna put a plug in this so 
Let me do that. There it is. <laughs> it's starting to look a, a a little neat. This is this is already a pretty uh pretty fancy thing. But yeah. So now let me just prepare this end of the cable and uh, let's just test this this thing. See if uh, the wiring works and uh, nothing bad happens. What I have here is my uh, test cable. It's just a Euro plug with some Wago connectors in the end. So I'll just wire this thing in and plug it in to see if it works. Now, if I did everything right, let's just first plug this in. Okay, now let's turn on the power. Okay, nothing there. Now let's turn on the actual unit. And there it is. <laughs> it's sprung into life. And it is moving quite a lot of air. Let me see if I can uh, demonstrate this. Uh, hey, it, it is sucking. You can, you can check it right here okay so as you see yeah it, it's sucking a lot of air so yeah this thing works nice so let's turn it off now now let's proceed to the other side of the box okay So there it is, plug has been wired in, and the whole unit is ready. Let me, again, test this out. So, plugged in, it's on, and let's turn it on. See if this works. There we go. It's doing its thing. Right, so now let's move to the to the um, other side of the box, okay? <laughs> Sorry for that. Now on this side of the box, the actual box itself, uh, I, I'm just going to do a bunch of holes, a series of holes here. The bigger the better in this case, I don't want, uh, but I don't want to make the holes too big so that uh, they are interfering with the, the rigidness of the box and its sturdiness. So I'm just going to make some uh, decently sized holes on the sides. And yep, I, after that, I think, yeah, the, the project is going to be finished. Then we just to cut the, the um, uh, filters and place them on the holes. Remember that you gotta put some, uh, some decently sized holes or at least a lot of them because this that thing it's just it's moving a lot of air and that air it shouldn't be trapped in here because 
if if you just close the lid as it is, what it's going to do is just going to um, um, instead of trying to to blow air into this case, it's just going to try to get air from it and outside of it, and uh, that's not good. <laughs> so just put some adequately sized holes in here, and you'll be good to go. Okay. So let me throw this this box in, and uh, you're right back. So after um, all that, I've decided just to do this quick take here, just to show the the final product done. Um, sorry for the uh, like the low quality. I had to use my um, my phone again. I again don't want to upset the the recording rig. So here it is. I've already installed the the tube. Now it's just a matter of uh, turning it on. Here it is. It instantly makes a lot of noise. Now. Over here, I've uh, already mangled this thing trying to uh, manhandle it into place. Okay, 
Let's see if I can do this with just one hand. So, soldering station is ready at a 280 degrees C. Uh, let's see. So, there it is. Works perfectly. And this is uh, quite far away. So, yeah. This is nice. Really does work well. Oh, there was a way out of it. Hey, this thing works. So yeah, so that was it. Um, it's a very simple thing. It works in the end. The, the, that's what matters. And yeah, um, hope you've liked this one. It was a, a quick one and a very weird one. <laughs> with a lot of uh, different stuff. But hey, this is nice. So um, hope to see you in the next video. I'll continue with the headphone amplifier series. Yeah, sorry for the quick tangent, but I, I really need to get this done and hey, just want to uh, put it on a video. So yeah, um, see you later. Bye.